Breakdown of a 16-carbon palmitate molecule yields a remarkable amount of ATP. Let's see how it happens. Each beta oxidation, the removal of a 2-carbon unit, yields two reduced electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, plus one molecule of acetyl-CoA. There will be seven beta oxidations, and these reactions will yield seven NADHs, seven FADH2s, and eight acetyl-CoA's. Let's put the electron carriers aside for now and look at the fate of the acetyl-CoA's. Each acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle, and each turn of the cycle produces three NADHs, one FADH2, and one ATP via GTP. Let's add them up. NADH from beta oxidation, 7, and from the citric acid cycle, 24 or 31 total. FADH2 from beta oxidation, 7, and from the citric acid cycle, 8 or 15 total. For the payoff, let's see what happens when these electron carriers reach the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Each NADH entering the chain produces about three ATPs. We have rounded the numbers off for simplicity, or a total of approximately 93 ATPs from 31 NADHs. Each FADH2, again rounding the numbers, makes two ATPs, or 30 from FADH2s, and remember that eight ATPs have already been made in the citric acid cycle. So the final yield, 8 plus 93 plus 30 equals 131. Even when we take away two ATPs needed to activate the palmitate to palmitoyl CoA at the beginning, there are still 129 ATPs left. Remember that these numbers are approximate. If you want to hibernate, putting on a lot of fat is a good idea. Mm.